Well, I didn't have time to do a proper episode again because the builders are still there. So I just thought I'd go into the woods and ramble on for a good 10 minutes. So I'm sorry about this. Just skip to the end and like. <laughs> I promise I'll be back to doing better things next week. Today I'm here to promote my new book on composition. I'm not really. This is the uh, Landscape Photographer of the Year collection number two, whenever it is, some, some time in the past. I'm talking about how to train your eye to take good photographs. There's a lot of rules and things like rule of thirds, the golden mean, but like anybody who reads a lot after a while they can recognize good well if you read a lot of good novels you can recognize good writing and good grammar and how the structure is put together of that novel even a painting if you look at a lot of artwork of good artists you can see how that eventually you've got to get an instinctive feeling of how these images are put together and it's the same with photography so my advice is to if you're interested in winning competitions just look at lots and lots of books of comp competition winning images study them see how other photographers do it and eventually you'll 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 um, develop an eye or an instinctive appreciation of how they have done that just analyze it from, you know have a look and see how does it differ from a natural photograph or a raw complete unaltered photograph and then work backwards from that I mean I've got a friend who's uh, who spent most of his uh, life um, he playing truant from school and he was actually hiding in the school library and they never found him because he was bored with lessons and he just wanted to read read books and his grasp as in of English is far better than a lot of people who have studied it studied the rules because he knows and has a feeling of how the book and the grammar and the use of words are put together and when he didn't know what that word meant he'd look it up and then he'd get a feel and because he had a context of that word he'd know how to apply it in his own language or his own written output I suppose so he was very good at um, crosswords and things like that so and also what I've learned over the years is there's different types of composition if you're photographing for competitions then usually they'll accept the full frame if you're photographing for a client then usually you'll have to have a bit more around the edge to give the graphic designer or the website designer more leeway to play with the image see I sometimes shoot for stock and I've learned to leave a 10% what was it gone margin <laughs> get it in the frame down the outside of the frame and the bottom and also shoot it always shoot it slightly wider and sometimes other elements come into that so you'll have to delete them or clone them out so you have that border fluid enough they could do a crop either way and also shoot things in um, portrait format because that's a lot of images are used in portrait format also if you look at you know leave gaps at the top of blank areas where they can run text 
and that's the same with a lot of um, magazines yeah you got to leave gaps which would n normally not be right you see that's it where you have like um, how can I say you have gaps on the right hand side where they can run text down or the left hand side if they run like on magazines where they list different articles because don't forget we read everything from left to right unless you're in Japan or Chinese where they read it right to left so if you're shooting and you want your pictures to appear in magazines and newspapers you know things like the Guardian over here in the UK quite often the the, the like a lot of negative space like this here where they can run text over it or huge areas of sky or plain backgrounds we can also also think about color people tend to prefer warm tones you know cool blue textures and greys look cold and unappealing but people like that warm golden light and I remember years and years ago there was um, a guy who used to produce a lot of stuff for poster manufacturers and he made sure always that the, the foreground was slightly warmer in colour temperature than the background because he says warmer pictures sell unless you, you sell into uh, interior designers and if they've got a blue or grey scheme they want some either neutral or cooler in the outlook and it's also good to try and simplify the composition and the subject um, because most things are seen on screen you know and on photo libraries the small thumbnails complicated intricate scenes which are hard to decipher and not really you know they don't stand out you want to look at that and say oh that's a mountain and a lake and that's a simple scene whereas anything really intricate doesn't really sort of stand out see after a while you'll develop like a sixth sense of your eye will be drawn to things in the landscape and you won't have to work really hard to pull out those images also watch films a great lot of time and effort has been put into getting that shot just right look at the coloration of how the movie is set like in the in the matrix movies that slight weirdy green tinge to to denote when you're in the matrix which is you sort of didn't really notice at first but it's only contrast by when the character neo gets out of the matrix and there's a contrast between that world the world of artificial intelligence and the real world and a lot of uh, films have like certain colorations and certain look to them it gives it a sense of feeling you see you look at that you know um because you know people have done the work before you all you have to do is look at them watch documentaries on photographers or directors of photography and they'll tell you how to, how it's done it's all out there there's loads of stuff on the internet to ha how to refine it also pay attention to your your white balance auto white balance is not always the be and all and end, end all it's like today auto white balance will be filtering out this golden light which is landing on me because it sees it as not neutral it goes for a neutral bias so it'll go halfway between the cold of the shadows which is blue sky and the warmth of the light anyhow I think I've done enough rambling on the reason I've done this is a filler episode <laughs> because I've got the builders in as normal I haven't quite finished so I couldn't get out and I'm going to use this lovely evening to try and photograph something 
I don't know if this wood's any good because it's a bit too young. All the trees are relatively the same age and it's not old and gnarly enough. Well, I failed to find anything to photograph. So that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel.